So welcome to our very first Vancouver Women's Paleo Meetup, and I'm so thrilled to have you all here. I just want to thank you for spending your evening with me, uh, and today we're going to go through just really the basics of the paleo diet, but also how you need to adjust that when you're a woman. And when there are certain things that you need to take into account really to be successful. And I will just start by saying, um, just take a minute wherever you are, take away your distractions, shut down extra browsers, kind of get rid of that noise around you so that you can really focus. And we'll be together for about the next hour and get those distractions away and just take a deep breath if you need to and leave everything from your day and just focus. And thank you so much for saying yes to your health and to learning and being here for this call. So first of all, who am I? Um, my name is Kara Roth and I am a, I don't know, I love food. I am super passionate about health and women's health. I'm also a registered holistic nutritionist and I will share a little bit about my story if that's okay to begin. So, I mean, I got to where I am today from a variety of, of different places, but I've always understood and known really the power of food, and I've always been interested in, in health. And I grew up as a competitive athlete, and that's something that really, it, it was my first exposure to how much food can really impact your body and really fuel your body. And I grew up in Saskatchewan and I came out to beautiful Vancouver to attend UBC and I have my cell biology and genetics degree from there. And I love my time there. I learned a lot and I really, it enabled me to understand the human body on a really deep level. But the closer I got to kind of the, the health system that I knew I wanted to work in, the more I understood that's a not, that was not the right path for me. So I actually took uh, one summer and I went to pastry school and I'm a certified pastry chef as well. And I just, I, I love that. It was really, that's where I learned my art in food. And that's where I just, I mean, it was actually so much more difficult than anything I ever did at UBC. And I learned that when in doubt, add more butter. Um, <laughs> and nutrition is finally coming around to the butter thing. So I really love that and really learned um, how food can be used just really beautifully and masterfully. And it was ironically in pastry school that I heard of this thing called holistic nutrition. And I had no idea that it existed. I didn't know you could do it as a career. And that's something that I fell in love with immediately. And I, I so enjoyed my time in nutrition school. I'm a really avid learner. And I just really appreciate how amazing this vessel is that we have. Our bodies are just, I mean, they're such a gift. And the power of food is is something that I got to learn not only in theory and in school, but also going through my own health journey. And there was a period where, I mean, I honestly, I couldn't eat anything without being in extreme pain and nobody really knew what was going on. I went through the medical route. I went through the alternative route. I tried everything. I spent tens of thousands of dollars and, and nothing worked. And for me, the missing piece was learning what I needed and really understanding that I needed to value my health and value myself above anything else. And it took me to go to a pretty deep and dark place in order to make that realization. So a lot of what I do today, I teach, I do webinars like this. Um, and I just, I love just jamming about nutrition. And that's really what this community is about. And I really got to be in the place of someone who had no answers and who was in chronic pain and got to deal with, you know, all of the things that come with that really, plus the one thing that I love the most in life and just, you know, being social with people and enjoying a good meal that was taken away from me. So I understand what it's like to lose your health, but I also, that also gave me the, the blessing that now I understand what it's like to have vital health. And really what you put in your mouth will move you towards or away from your health goals. And yes, that's a little bit black and white and there's so many more things to it, but I've just been on this journey of exploring what's really, what are we really meant to eat and how are we really meant to function optimally in all areas of life. So food is obviously my foundation, but we're talking exercise and fitness, mental wellness, chemical wellness, reducing the amount of inflammation, um, spiritual wellness, everything is all combined in one if you can truly be holistic with your health. So our foundation today is food and delicious food and exploring this thing called paleo and how it can really serve us. And so with my journey with paleo, um, I've eaten paleo-esque, I guess you could call it. So kind of paleo for quite a while, but by no means have I been in this for 20 years or anything like that. Uh, but it's been a journey that I've really learned a lot about. 
And more recently, I've been more strict because I really wanted to just, and I don't mean strict in a bad way. I was really excited to learn this whole thing and how it would affect my body on a much deeper level by doing it with, with a lot more intention. And what I've found and what I've discovered and just the, the research that's new and coming out and it's just leading more and more towards this thing. But there's a huge lack of knowledge and of information out there, which is funny because I mean, there's so much nutrition information out there. It's extraordinarily overwhelming. And I'll be the first to say that, I mean, although I do pride myself on keeping up to date with nutrition as much as I can, I still can't do it. And I would never expect anyone else to be able to do that because, I mean, this is what I do. And I would never expect you to be able to keep up with it and understand it all. And I just hope tonight my intention is really just to educate you and to give you some tools that you can implement into your life right away in order to get better health and to really reach your health goals. And I just want you to consider what is the number one thing that you would like to change in your health right now? What's the one breakthrough in your health that you would like right now? And it can be something super simple. It can be something big or it can just be more awareness and more education and more confidence about how you're fueling your body, whether you're new to paleo or you're more seasoned. So with that, I just want to dive right in. And I will try to leave a few minutes at the end for questions. I had a few people email me with questions. So thank you so much for doing that. And this is definitely the first of many webinars. And I definitely plan on keeping them all free, just to really pitch free and free, just because this is a way that we can learn together. And like I said, it's my favorite thing is to just jam about nutrition and really help serve you as much as I can. So welcome, and it's super nice to meet you all, and I look forward to you know spending a lot more time together around this realm. Um, and it's been a beautiful day in Vancouver, if that's where you are currently. So let's just go right back to basics. What is paleo, and where did this idea come from? And actually, I wrote an article on this recently because the whole paleo diet is essentially the premise is to go back to our roots and to prehistoric not prehistoric, but just to, to the time where we first evolved as a species. And that was about 100,000 years ago is, is what they say we're wired as. So our physiology is the same as it was 100,000 years ago, which just completely blows my mind. Um, I can't conceive that amount of time. But yet you can imagine even in the last 10, 20, 50 years, how much things have changed. Not only the amount of input and information and technology, but our food is drastically different. And one thing I'll say right away is one of the big things about paleo that seems to pop up quite often is that it is not historically accurate. And I say, of course it's not. No, it's not accurate because there's no way that our food, like we've bred our food and, and you know, hybridized it and done different things to it over the last 100,000 years. So there's no way that we will eat even remotely close to what it was like 100,000 years ago. But that being said, the basic ideas and premises are still very valid in today's world. So the whole idea of paleo is that, again, that prehistoric, but really feeding the body what it's meant to have. And what that means is paleo generally takes out all grains. So there's no grains, there's no dairy, and there's no legumes. So there's no beans, peanuts, that kind of thing. And usually no lentils. I've never, lentils are not a legume, but I've never really seen lentils in the paleo world. So what it focuses on are an abundant amount of veggies, low sugar fruits like berries. Uh, they stay away from other fruits generally. Uh, we're talking really good quality animal proteins, fish, meat, eggs, etc., and a, a ton of healthy fat. So that's kind of the basic premise of it. And there's obviously no refined foods, so no white sugar, that kind of thing. So nothing that you would essentially need a lab to create instead of something you can grow in your garden and pick and choose. And honestly, that's how we talk about nutrition with kids all the time is if you can grow it and make it in your kitchen, then chances are it's pretty good for you. But if you need a lab to make it, then that's a whole nother story because that's just not what we're meant to eat. And our food is consistently and constantly changing. And even over the last 10 or 15 years, there's been huge shifts in the nutritional value of our food. But that is time for that. That will be another talk. So that's the idea of paleo is that it's, it's veggie focused, meat focused, and then really using so no grains, no dairy, no legumes and limited fruit. And that's the basic of it. My version of paleo, which is 
I don't know, an upgraded version, a tweaked version, a real food version, because like any diet, you can eat paleo badly. Um, I believe Oreos are actually vegan. So you can get away by eating chips and, you know, and Oreos and Slurpees, and those are all things that are vegan. And like any diet, paleo can also fall into that. So the one big, big place that I see people really missing the boat when it comes to paleo is they don't take into account food quality. So quality is so, so important. And I'm not asking you to go and to eat 100% organic and go hunt your food and that kind of thing. But you really need to look at the quality that you have in your life right now of your food. And I'll dive into what that means later. But you want to look at the quality of the food you're eating and really elevate that and take that to the next level or at least pieces of it and take that to the next level. And another thing is that it needs to be real food focused. So I mean, I went to this, there's this big uh, trade show every year in Vancouver and it's called the CHFA show and it's an industry only um, trade show and health and supplement kind of thing. And I went in April and the, the biggest takeaway from that was there is a lot of very crappy products that are now labeled as healthy in our food system and they're all packaged stuff, but it's all crap. To be completely honest, none of it is nourishing. There was maybe one or two things that I found there that were exciting and that were actually whole food based, but it was like, now we can get grass fed butter in Canada, whereas before we couldn't. That was the most exciting thing from that fair. But there are chips and pastas and everything and everything is gluten free. And But all of it's just, it's just, it's not good for us. So really focusing on that real food. So super veggie abundant, um, looking at things that are higher quality. And again, I'll dive into that in a little bit. I just, I don't want to go to down the wormhole at the very beginning, but just really understanding quality. The second thing that paleo is a big misconception is that it's high protein and high meat. So you kind of get that like caveman with the club kind of idea going and you think about them just eating meat and that's it. And that's totally not what it's about. And in the world that I work in and where I've seen the most success is that you have a high veggie diet, moderate carbohydrates, and moderate protein with high healthy fats. And we're going to, again, dive into all of that. But moderate protein, moderate carbohydrates, high healthy fats, and really abundant in plant foods. And that's really the way that we are meant to eat. The high protein thing works for some people, but it really is not, a, it's not a recommendation I would feel comfortable making. And it's something that is a big misconception. It's not just a meat diet. And I know some of the people as they were you know, joining the meetup group, they were just kind of on the the, the, the questions that were coming up was like, well, how much meat do I need? Or I'm concerned about eating too much meat or having to eat a lot of meat. And that's really not what it is. You can do it in a variety of ways, but it's not a high protein diet. And you can, of course, play around with the carbohydrates as well, which is another area, but it's something that it's, it's moderate carbs, moderate protein, high fat is what you want to go for. And that also really has a lot to do with women's health. So benefits of eating paleo why would you even want to go here like i said it, it is really the closest thing that we can get to when you're eating a high quality paleo diet that is what our bodies thrive off of and i can tell you from when i when i was kind of mostly paleo or whatever you want i hate labels by the way um i don't consider myself any one thing i just eat for optimal health so i think we all kind of need to maybe take a step back from the labels but the closest thing to how i eat is paleo um and it's not you know you don't need to get all all strict and, and crazy on me i'm a pretty moderate person in most cases but with that the thing that i found from eating more intentionally and more aligned with paleo and for me what that meant was absolutely no grains and I absolutely started to feel phenomenal and I still do a huge amount of energy. The biggest thing I noticed right away was mental clarity and quality of sleep. So I've been needing to sleep a lot less and I feel fantastic. Uh, body composition changes, which I always say fantastic, always going to take those ones. Um, but it's just been a real eye opener to just how good you can feel. And I love continuing down that journey of how good can you feel and perform and, and just all of that stuff. So the benefits of eating this way are just, I mean, I always like to say you'll live longer because you will <laughs> in, in all likelihood when you're feeding your body what it loves and what it needs, then there's so many benefits. You're going to drastically reduce your risk for any sort of disease or preventable disease. You're going to have more energy, more mental clarity. Your mood is going to be better. 
I mean, I could just go on and on and on. And I think the one big thing is energy because there's never anyone, there's never been a single person who's walked into my practice that has not asked for more energy. And I believe it just comes down to the fact that we just want to do more of what we love and what lights us up. And we want to have more time. And in order to take advantage of the same amount of time, you need more energy. And I just think that's a really beautiful thing is just to really make it count and really allow yourself to do more of that, of those things that you love, because then the whole world is a better place after that. But that's just some of the benefits. And then obviously for women, hormone balance is huge. Weight loss is huge. Uh, clear skin. It's really beauty. Nice nails, nice hair, nice skin. Um, that's something that really comes along with it when you're doing it properly. So that's the basic overview of what paleo is, what my version of paleo is, and what the benefits are. So now I want to dive a little bit into the benefits and the, where women get caught up. Because paleo, I'll tell you right now, works phenomenally for men. And most of the people, honestly, who follow it are men because of that. And they can do all these crazy things and they feel fantastic and they lose weight really easily. And I know like you, we hear the stories of people's husbands or you know, you and your husband or partner or whomever goes um, paleo, you both do it. And then the guy has fantastic results and you like feel horrible. And you're wondering what the hell is going on because he just lost 10 pounds in a week and you just feel gross. And all of it has to do with hormones. And the, that's the one area that I've been absolutely loving really kind of digging down and doing some research into both through self experiments and through more formal stuff and studies and everything like that. But in all honesty, there's not a lot of information out there about women and how they're affected by paleo. So that's something that I really want to change because I think it can be so powerful, but when we take a few things into account. So first of all, weight loss, that's a super, super common thing. So let's touch on that for a moment. And what determines our metabolism? So our metabolism is controlled by hormones. It's, it's controlled by hormones. So a lot of the times we think that we want to lose weight or change our body composition, that our metabolism is either slow or sluggish, or we wish that we had a faster metabolism, but really we need to go above that. And our hormones are kind of the master control of our weight loss and our appetite and our, our satiety as well. So how, how we're going to be feeling full or whether we never feel full or when we feel hungry, all of that is controlled by hormones. And one primarily is called leptin. And that hormone is a, plays a really powerful role in the body. And I always say that if you feel like you've been doing everything right, but you're not losing weight or you're not shifting your body composition, but yet you eat well, you're exercising, you know, you're managing that stuff, you're doing well, but you're not seeing any changes. It has everything to do with hormones. And thankfully, this is kind of something that's been fun because to balance out leptin, leptin is what increases your metabolism while decreasing your appetite sounds like a dream world, right? So it increases your metabolism while it decreases your appetite. That's fantastic because what actually, and I won't get too sciencey on you, I'm sorry, don't worry, but what, what happens with leptin is it's actually produced by our fat cells. So when we carry extra weight and extra fat, the whole idea is that our fat cells produce leptin, which again, increases metabolism, decreases appetite. So we want to get rid of that extra fat. But what happens in our brain, it's almost like diabetes. Diabetes. So what or like type 2 diabetes, I should say. So what happens is that there's a lot of leptin that's circulating in our system when we're overweight. But what's happening is that our brain is deaf to it. So you can't really, it, it can't hear it. So it's like, you know, someone's knocking up there saying like, whoa, whoa, like we need to, we need to burn this fat and your brain can't hear it. And that's called leptin sensitivity. And that's something I see a lot. And I've seen a lot in the past. And I mean, I've been working with this for years. And I mean, it took me a while to realize that the protocol in order to reduce uh, leptin sensitivity and to get your body back to functioning and, and in balance is actually a paleo style diet. And what causes your leptin sensitivity and what causes you to carry extra weight when you shouldn't be it is really too many carbohydrates and too much sugar. And that's what causes it. And I mean, that stuff causes a whole whack of other things, which we'll touch on briefly in a few minutes, but it's the sugar and carbohydrates that really cause your body to go out of whack through a variety of different ways, which I won't get into. If you're curious about that, then we can definitely continue the conversation. But it's something that I think is so important that we understand that hormones are what control that. And 
a paleo style of eating is exactly what resets your hormones. It's really very simple and you really just need to reduce the amount of carbohydrates um, and sugars that you're eating. And it can, it can actually be that simple. So that's kind of fun. And that's where I really find that paleo is really beautiful when it comes to hormone balancing. And if you do it in the right way, because here's the catch. If you do paleo the normal way, the male way, you will imbalance your hormones. But if you do paleo with a few little tweaks, which are not big things at all, then you have the opportunity to rebalance your hormones. And that comes from a lot of different reasons. But one is, again, that primary, you're reducing the amount of carbohydrates that you're eating, and you're increasing the amount of healthy fats. And that's super, super important. So that's something that Fat is fantastic. And believe me, we are going to do whole things on fat because I could talk about it forever. I just actually recorded a, a video blog today about fat. And that's something that's super, super important. So, and that's really what helps balance hormones. So I just want to, I want to leave, or I want to let you know those few things that really do mess up women's hormones. And what happens then is we get the opposite of what we want. We get weight gain, we get tiredness, fatigue, you know, you get a super, like that slump in the afternoon, um, you're irritable, all that gross stuff can happen when you eat paleo, the improper way that imbalances your hormones. So one thing is intermittent fasting, and that's really, really common in the paleo world. And you'll see it, especially with people who are more active or who do CrossFit or, or lift or that kind of thing. And intermittent paleo or intermittent fasting, sorry, is something that works really well, again, for men, but it is not a practice that I recommend for women. And it's been self-experimenting and otherwise that has taught me that. But even after it took my system two weeks of intermittent fasting in order to throw my hormones off. And how I knew that was my blood sugar was crazy. So getting really hangry, um, sleep was disturbed and I was actually starting to gain weight after two weeks. And that's it. That's not a long period of time. So if you don't know what intermittent fasting is, that's fine. You can just leave it because you don't really want to do it anyways. So that's something that I don't recommend. And generally in the paleo world, there's a lot of um, hype lately around bulletproof coffee and caveman coffee and different fat coffees. And what I recommend that you do is I love fat coffee and it sounds so weird. So if you haven't had it, trust me, it's delicious. It's so good and it's so good for you. But look up a rocket fuel latte. And that's a way that is a great addition. And I'm also going to be posting and I'll definitely post in the meetup group and on my Facebook page as well. Um, different, uh, a different type of coffee that I've been experimenting with that I really like as well that contains a lot of healthy fats and antioxidants and things that just make us feel really good. So that's something that's really exciting. But having the fat coffee or the caveman coffee or bulletproof coffee or rocket fuel latte, those things are all great to include in your diet as a way of kind of cheating uh, the intermittent fasting piece and also getting a lot of really healthy fat. Um, another thing with women that we tend to, to get into a rut with is when we go too low carb. So carbohydrates, they are really important, but in all honestly, all honesty, we eat way too much of them, way too much. So if I think about a typical diet, how many times are you eating? And when I say carbohydrates, I mean things like not only your breads and pastas and rice and grains, um, but also even things like yams and sweet potatoes corn, regular potatoes, those things are all starches, carbohydrates, and we eat way too much of them. If you think about a typical diet, what are you doing? You have toast for breakfast or cereal, maybe you have a granola bar as a snack, you have a sandwich for lunch, you have like, I don't know, a cookie or something in the afternoon, and then you eat what pasta for dinner and a cake for dessert. That's all grains and carbohydrates. So really one of the most impactful things you can do in your health is to reduce the amount of grains and carbohydrates. Because I guarantee you, unless you've been following a more primal lifestyle for a while, you are definitely overeating carbohydrates and we really don't need that much. But that being said, women do need a little bit more than men can get away with. So I'm not villainizing carbohydrates by any means. But what happens is when we eat too much, it causes a lot of inflammation and hormone imbalance. And that just, it just leads to not good things in the body. So you don't want to cut it out completely, but you want to be mindful of the amount you're eating. And it's kind of fun. I like tracking my food every so often just so that you can kind of figure it out and see where you're at. And you don't need to track your food every day, but you can use something like my net, my net diary or fitday.com. They're all free services and just do it for three or four days and then see where are you at? 
how, like how much fat are you eating? How many carbohydrates are you eating? And I'm going to show you a way that it should be structured in a few minutes. So you can kind of compare those numbers to what is more ideal. And I think it's really enlightening because we honestly don't realize how much of that stuff we're eating. And when you think about even serving sizes, like, you know, who in their right mind is eating a quarter cup of rice? Like, I'm not saying that's a serving size, but, you know, we just eat, we eat a lot of it and way more than one serving. So just be even more mindful of those types of things and how many grains and stuff you are eating. And if you're thinking, oh my God, then what do I eat? I have a solution for you. And we're going to talk about that in a couple minutes because it's a piece that I love. So we're going to talk about the actual how-to stuff in a minute. So just relax for now and uh, continue to take in the information. But I think that more, I think that focusing on reducing your carbs while increasing your healthy fat is a really important practice when you're switching over to a more paleo style diet. And I always just encourage you to take where you're at right now stretch yourself, but only take one or two steps forward or only change one or two things. Because it's really when you take on too much and overwhelm yourself, then things are going to go on. And I mean, everything from like digestive disturbances because you ate way too much fiber or something like that. Whenever you're shifting, you want to be really mindful and do it slowly and don't have too much fat because that, my friend, will end poorly. Um, there's a thing called disaster pants if you have too much fat at once. And yeah, <laughs> it's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> or you'll get really nauseous, either one. But you want to just slowly increase it. And I really, I mean, actually a couple great resources. Grain Brain by Dr. David Perlmutter. I actually, I have it on my shelf. I have it right here. So these are two. So this is Grain Brain. It's by Dr. David Perlmutter. And this is a book that I read a few years ago when it came out, and I just recently reread because it was really good motivation to what I was doing. And I think this is so, so important. He's, he's a doctor, so it's a little bit dry, um, but I found it super exciting because I like this kind of stuff. But that he just really reiterates, and, and I understand where he's coming from, uh, and he really keeps up to date on research, and I so value that. His second book, um, is brain maker. So really cool, right? So this one also super, super good. This is the second one. Those are a couple great resources by the same author. I'm sure a lot of you have seen wheat belly, but if you want to dive into that, um, if you want to dive into the grain free world a little bit more, highly recommend those resources. All right, so we are going to jump right into my meal plate. And this is really where I think a lot of things are great. So if you have a pen or a piece of paper, or you can do that right now, that would be a really great thing to do, um, or a really great thing to grab. And I'm going to show you my plate. So the idea of how you structure your plate is something that's super powerful. And I'm a really visual person. So I drew you my picture, my meal plate. So I'll put it up. So this is my meal plate. And I'll tell you what each of the pieces mean. But essentially, it's half, and then it's cut into quarters, and then there's a little slice out of the half. I know I have a really, it doesn't matter how many times I draw this, I can never get the circle quite right. But I wanted to show it to you because this is exactly what the meal plate, this is what your meal plate should look like. And it can be any meal. Um, and so the half, the half of the plate, I mean, Again, this is totally not rocket science, but shifting your diet to having your food look more like this will make huge impacts in your health. Um, the half of the plate, you want it to be veggies. No surprise. But maybe, you something, maybe something that you haven't heard before is that you should keep it to two to three types of veggies. So greens or let like lettuces, those are a free food. You can have those all the time and then keep it to two or three types of veggies. And the reason is, is that it actually impacts our digestion. So when you eat too many things at once, it will overwhelm your digestive system. And that leads to things like bloating and discomfort and indigestion. And um, it can definitely affect things further down the line as well. So just keeping it simple. And I tell you, I used to be an absolute queen of like a 50 ingredient stir fry. No problem there whatsoever. And that's something that I didn't realize until, and that, that happens with a lot of healthy people is we just eat way, way, way too many things at once. And that event especially goes for veggies. So just keep it simple. Um, each meal, I'll just keep it to two or three types. 
the quarter, one of the quarters is going to be your protein. So I really love that we have measuring cups in our hands. So the size of meat that you want to have um, is about the size of your palm in thickness and in, I don't know, size, width, whatever you want to call it. So that's a good place to start. And what I'll say about protein, I'll get into it further in animal products, is take wherever you are quality-wise. So if you're buying it from like Superstore or Safeway, then, then go to an antibiotic-free meat. If you're buying antibiotic-free, go to organic. And the ideal is grass-fed and finished beef. Um, or meat or any of that kind of stuff. So pork, a couple great resources are Sumas Mountain Farms. Um, and I can post all this stuff as well. So you guys can get these, these links. Home on the Range Organics is fantastic. So Sumas Mountain, Home on the Range Organics, more and more places are starting to sell these types of meats and we live in such a beautiful place and we're so blessed to have so many local resources so just look for better quality stuff and that's so important because of how our body interprets it and and beef for example from a regular feedlot conventional cow is an ex it's completely different nutritionally than a grass-fed cow and the grass-fed is really what we're meant to be eating. So is it more expensive? Yes, it is. But it's when you buy in bulk, it's really not that bad. And take advantage of your freezer. And another brand that I love and that we actually eat the most of is Hill Meat. So it's H-I-L-L, -L, like a hill. Uh, hill meat that one is you can find it at save on and it's in the freezer section so depending on which grocery store you're at which save on it'll have a different selection and they kind of market wild and exotic meats as well but you can find bison lamb beef um, all that kind of stuff from them and their sausages are really really good so that's something that's a great resource for protein. So you don't want to overdo the protein. Um, the next quarter of your plate is going to be your starches and carbohydrates. So those are ideally things like yam and sweet potato. Yam and sweet potato are my favorite. Those are my number one source of starches, especially orange yams. They're so healing to our adrenal glands, which all of us need support with, especially as women. So great for hormone balance. Those orange yams are fantastic. I'm not a fan of white regular potatoes because they're just sugar and that's it they really don't have any nutritional value left in them i would much rather have a sweet potato or a yam um, another thing i love is also buckwheat which is it's not there's no gluten in it and it's not a grain it's a seed wild rice is the third one so using yams the sweet potatoes buckwheat or wild rice those are great options Another thing that you can do, especially if you're more active, is have white rice and jasmine rice preferably. And that's, you're like, oh, I'm now a nutritionist recommending white rice. And I do recommend that if you eat white rice and just Google paleo white rice and you will get all the information you need on that. And that's about a quarter of your plate. So you can play around with that a little bit, but it's really not that much. So it's like maybe a third of a sweet potato kind of idea, which I know it was so arbitrary because they're all different sizes, but just keep it moderate because you don't want to have a ton of that. So it should just be a small piece of your plate. Plantains are also another safe starch. Uh, those are a good thing to have as well. So doing that and quinoa is not my favorite. Sorry. Um, it just, it's inflammatory and it doesn't act. It, it kind of damages our intestinal system, unfortunately. So just don't do a ton of it. Um, and then the little sliver, the little sliver is healthy fat. And this, obviously, I love. So my healthy fats are things like um, organic coconut oil, organic, ideally pastured butter. Butter is fantastic. It's so healing. Have more of it. Um, avocados, raw nuts and seeds, unheated olive oil. I don't believe we should be cooking with our, our olive oil. And that's a little bit of a generalization, but I won't, I won't get into it. And we are going to wrap up actually in the next few minutes. So um, I just want to make sure I can get all the juicy stuff in. Um, I realize now, which I did not, so I apologize for this, that the Zoom software only allows a 40-minute meeting. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but we, we got everything in that I wanted to. And we'll finish talking about that. And please email me questions uh, or post on the Meetup page or on my Facebook. You can friend me, Kara Roth. Just feel free to friend me there. I use my personal page as more kind of business inspiration and I would love to see you over there so back to healthy fats um, coconut oil ghee is fantastic or clarified butter if you have a dairy sensitivity ghee butter organic coconut oil raw nuts and seeds unheated olive oil and then things like avocados and eggs and all that kind of stuff and I just really encourage you to eat more of this and again the serving size for that is when you make an okay sign it's about this 
size. So for me, it's a little over a tablespoon. I would say at least a tablespoon of healthy fat every time you eat. And if that seems scary, we're going to do a whole other, other webinar on fat. And just start small. Like I said, don't go to town and eat like six avocados at once because you're going to get really sick. And if you think about trying to eat a stick of butter, then I mean, ugh, you get that gag reflex, right? So just start small and, and increase your healthy fat over time because that is what balances hormones. So if you are, I mean, most of our hormones are made from fat. And I just, I, like I said, I won't get into it, but we'll do a whole nother call just on fat. So follow the meal plate. And you know, guys, I have had amazing results with clients following this. It's been absolutely phenomenal. And I've had one couple, the, the husband lost, I think, 50 pounds since January. The girl, her name is Shay. She's an absolute pleasure to work with. And she's been, she's lost, I think, 40, 35, 30-ish pounds. Um, but she's in pants that she wore 13 years ago, which is crazy. And it's just by following the dinner plate. So just remember to keep it balanced. And the action that I would love for you guys to do this week starting tomorrow or tonight is just pick that one thing that you're drawn to the most and try that keep it super simple let me know in the comments on the meetup group or on my facebook page and thanks so sorry for being 20 minutes shorter than, or 10 yeah then i sorry for being shorter than i thought i would be but have a really really beautiful evening we will definitely connect again and I wish you guys all the best on your health journey. And please email me with questions. I know I didn't cover all the ones that you sent in, but just let's start a conversation and then we'll definitely create more webinars like this just to continue the conversation. So thank you guys so much. I'd love to hear what that action is that you're going to take, what incremental change you make. And I hope you have a really beautiful evening. Bye guys.